Caddis Maximus here. This is just a quick review and a quick take, a uh, quick look inside this old skill uh, three quarter inch drill. Some of these were models 543, some were like 2123. They periodically do show up. This one does not. This one has been quite abused, <laughs> so much so that uh, the label is missing. It's been dropped, dented gearbox. Uh, as we can see, the handle's been welded on. That's a steel handle and aluminum body, so uh, those materials don't really weld together, but it looks like they just threw just a whole bunch of a, aluminum weld just to kind of jam it up in there and uh, did get the handle stuck. And we can even see on this one where this had been dropped so badly that the normal handle got all uh, broken apart and they welded that up too. So this really is uh, a pretty well used one. But when you spent the kind of money on a three quarter inch drill, you really did use it for pretty heavy duty work. And so, and uh, as much as beat up as this one is, it's kind of nice to know that uh, at least it was used for its intended purpose, which is heavy duty drilling. 375 RPM. I believe these were nine amps where the Milwaukee's and the Black and Deckers were like 10 amps. So maybe not quite as powerful as some of their competitors, but still pretty good. How I know it's a skill is uh, really it's this vent design on the skill half inch and three quarter inch drills. These three kind of chevron pattern rounded oblong holes are extremely distinctive of skill drills from the you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. That's how you know you have a skill even if you don't have a label for it. Totally distinctive. No other manufacturer used the partic this particular style. So it's at least nice to be able to identify drills that. And the square handle, one of the very worst handles in all of power tools, really. Uh, I think only Thor ever had worse handles than this. I did pick this up used for a whopping $20, and actually I'm just happy with it. I do have some other three-quarter inch drills, like a Milwaukee I reviewed and a Black & Decker. But ones like this are great. These are ones that you really do use in the dirt with ground augers, using them to run, you know, farmers would use these to run grain augers, winches, anytime you need a big power head. And maybe you are drilling large three quarter inch or even larger holes through steel, maybe using silver and Deming drill bits. Those are ones that have smaller shanks and then a bigger drill end. And this would be the type of drill you'd want to use with it. So they still definitely have a purpose, although they're much rarer now. Only a few manufacturers, such as Milwaukee, even still make three-quarter inch drills. And those are for the obvious reasons. They're very powerful, very strong. And if you're not watching what you're doing, even with huge handles, they will certainly knock you down. And so due to mainly safety regulations and whatnot, three big drills like this just aren't very common at all anymore just because they are they require uh you know uh, a lot of respect with running them but it's just kind of a shame because they certainly can be handy and it's very difficult when you want to drill with a lot of a serious amount of torque a lot more than what you get out of a half inch drill and especially the heavy duty gears definitely pretty hard to find so on old drills like this, it's always the back bearing. You really want to try to pop out the motor uh, just because the back bearing only has a tiny amount of grease in it where the front bearings and everything else have the big grease reservoir. Remember, grease itself isn't lubricating. Gl grease is like glop that whole has oil, little micro droplets of oil mixed in with it. And over time, the glop breaks down some, releasing the oil. That oil is then what lubricates all the parts. So in the gearbox, you have a huge reservoir that keeps all the bearings and usually the front motor bearing just fine. But in the back bearing, there's nothing. What's surprising is how the end of this is still good or how this little cover, these things notoriously get broken. I've seen several skill drills because this little cover is only held on by just a tiny little screw and allows you, I think if this is just a portion of the uh, casting, or the casting process, who knows why it's exactly like that. This one's definitely older. It has some of the uh, properties that you would expect. Let me, uh, it's a bit, uh, this thing is probably 15, 20 pounds. It's a little unwieldy, so it's a little harder to get it into the camera here. There we go. You can see where they've taken the field winding. It's wrapped, something they just basically don't do on almost, it's very rare to find any power tool. If you were to buy a Milwaukee or Bosch, very difficult. I think like 
on Bosch's, it's only their really high end, like six hundred dollar rotary hammers that have you know wrappings around the fields. They don't do that anymore. We can see welded contacts. This is a more classic motor winding where they have some wires that go in, and they have a piece of paper, and then a separate layer of wires just to prevent them from abrading each other. Once again, welded contacts. This drill has been used. You can feel just a little bit of a lip there, but it's still pretty good. And whenever you see these used, what you want to do is just give it a turn. Make sure it seems to turn. Actually, there is a and skill is pretty uh, rare. They have a five eighths drive or five eighths, excuse me, five eighths chuck uh, large scale drills. And those are pretty hard to find. And actually, with the garage sale, they had one of those, but it had been left out in the rain, and water had actually rusted the bearing solid, and you just physically could not get it to turn. You could grab the chuck, and it just felt like it was totally locked up. And uh, so I did pass up on that one. So if you're ever looking at these, that's the only thing you want to do is give it a nice turn, maybe even turn it backwards, see if you can feel any places where maybe the gears maybe stripped out, because that often happens. You'll be using this with a ground auger. It's been like a heavily used this one. And it'll be the last time it hits a rock and will actually strip out a part of the gears. So make sure it seems to turn okay. And uh, there doesn't seem to be any places where the teeth feel like they're missing or chunked out. Uh, would be my best uh, advice. I'm not going to get into the wiring. This is one of the worst parts about these skills. Very worst. You have to actually take these triggers. Oh, and you know it's old because it has a trigger lock on a three-quarter inch drill. So that could lead to a special adventure if you're drilling with it and you inadvertently press that uh in the i think sometime in the late 70s and the early 80s when they were still making quite a few or where there's still quite a few three-quarter inch drills available they wisely started uh, cutting out and removing uh the trigger locks because that can be pretty dangerous with a drill like this many times if this gets locked and get tears out of your hand you're just waiting for it to wind itself up and either rip its power cord out or unplug itself the problem with these skills is one uh, little tip. You have to hold, have the trigger held in to even remove the handle. You remove the handle and there's just a little bit of wire, extra wire in there. And then you have to actually unscrew a couple screws that hold the trigger in. And then the whole handle kind of slides down. You got to push the power cord in and slide the handle down. It was one of the very worst I've ever seen uh, as far as uh, being able to redo the wiring. Always just a pain with these skills because of the way everything's the handles kind of slid up over the wiring and you kind of got to fiddle with it and be careful uh to get the little screws in get the little ground screw tightened so definitely a big hassle there there was something else that was unique about this skill and that's this something you don't see very often on any tools this is a little grease window since this was really made for doing a lot of heavy duty work they put in this little cover, a couple of little screws, and you just remove that, and you just uh, use a grease gun and inject some grease down in through there just to make it easier to re-grease the gearbox without having to completely remove it. But, of course, in this video, uh, we do want to take a look at that gearbox, so let me go ahead and uh, get these screws out. I'll put a little bit of fresh grease. This isn't something I'm going to probably totally clean out all the grease and you know, restore it. You know, the way the case, this has been dropped here, so the case is dented there. It's dented here, so the field can't even be removed from this anymore because of the way it's dented in. And we'll do a little drilling. But let me get this gearbox off. Okay, I got the screws out. Surprisingly enough, these upper screws were only had about that much thread catching into it they're still tight but it's just a, definitely a bit short this thing is practically falling apart just by pulling out the screws sometimes these gearboxes are really stuck sometimes they're not i recommend when you try to pull them apart just so the whole thing doesn't uh shred itself you essentially try to hold the diaphragm and pull the gearbox out itself like so and we have a thrust washer which i assume goes right here and there we go as we can see it's many drills will do this where it is helical cut on the motor where it's the highest speed and it makes the biggest difference for noise and then they're straight cut for the rest of the gears triple reduction so two idle gears we can see there's some definitely some pretty large teeth one thing I did like about the skills, and it's something that's kind of a dirty secret about three-quarter inch drills, and even Milwaukee's been guilty of it, as many of them are three-quarter inch drills, but they use five-eight spindles. Once again, Milwaukee, I've owned a Milwaukee that was like that and sold it because it was disappointing. Why would you get a three-quarter inch drill that has a 
sub-size spindle. The th skills are indeed three-quarter inch drive spindles. The main drive gear in there is probably five eighths of an inch wide, just super duper thick. We have our secondary idle gear there, and it's all ball and needle bearing. So the spindle was indeed very tight. I forgot to mention, you pull the spindle in and out and try to rack it side to side to make sure the bearings are tight. Surprisingly enough, it's a pretty small ball bearing there on the back side. And needle bearings, and these are more classic style. You can see in there where it's just all a whole solid roll of needles. Uh, because they're straight cut gears in these idle gears, there's no reason for them to have uh, any uh, ball bearings because they don't have to deal with a bunch of uh, thrust loads. And then if we take a look here at the main portion, continuing on, you do want to pull out the brushes before you pull out the motor. I forgot to mention that. Another thing, quick thing is if you're going to reuse the brushes, and these are okay enough, you'll see that there's one side where there's these markings from the, excuse me, the brush guide, and the other side they're not there. So that indicates that the motor, actually on this one it's not quite as obvious because it has wear on both sides. Usually you'll decide that has the wear as the side that's the, known as the thrust side. Otherwise you can see like the, the kind of the, sparking side that means the motor was rotating this direction and so you'll want to try to put in the brushes in the same direction that they came out of and if you ever forget you just turn the truck and realize okay the motor and this in a triple reduction will spin counterclockwise and so you just put in the brushes in the appropriate direction anyway that's kind of the uh deal let me pop this gear back in here there's a little thrust washer that of course ah Always a little bit fidgety inside these. You can just see how wide this gear is just compared to my finger. And so you look at the idle gear or the, uh, these are idle gears, um, just to see if they have excessive wear or anything on the teeth. And this one uh, is actually pretty good. Usually the gears are in decent condition in these tools. They're actually just huge. Uh, in this three-quarter inch drill and that's one of the nice things about three-quarter inch drills Whoop. Ah. <laughs> still pretty heavy even without the gearbox you can see there's our two uh, needle bearing posts for the idle gears and this actually has a pretty large it looks like a half inch diameter 10 tooth uh, arbor on many power tools drills sawzalls all sorts of power tools that strip out gears usually it's this it's the spindle on the motor itself because uh, it's so small. One of the reasons they do helical cuts on them is uh, it makes it a little bit wider of a tooth. It's not just smoother and quieter. It actually gives a little bit more surface area um, just to help them last a little bit more. But on these big drills, oftentimes like this, they do put in very large uh, motor arbors. And let's go ahead and just pop this whole motor out. We should be able to get the motor out. We can't get the field out, but oh, wow. <clears throat> so this one... Many times the bearings are jammed onto the end of the motor, they're press fit, but on this skill, interestingly enough, everything's all kind of uh, separated and actually loose, and it's probably due to the fact of how much use this tool has. Almost never does the diaphragm just come off quite like that, and this because of that, I was pulling out the motor, this has definitely been pretty well used, because they use, very rarely can you just pull them out by hand. Um, it almost looks, you can see that there's some interesting lines here. This bearing is okay, but it looks like it may have been skidding at some point. Um, actually it feels just fine to tell you the truth. And this could just be a tool that just didn't have the greatest of tolerances. It's kind of surprising. But anyway, there's our uh, 9 amp motor. Not a ton to talk about here, although I was noticing you can see that some kind of rock or piece of debris was in there and actually did hit the wires. That's one of the reasons uh, I kind of like older tools is because they do even do even more protection than this one to prevent that from happening. But it actually turns out that it's pretty rare on tools for debris so significant to actually chip the wires. But that definitely it did not break all the way through it. But you can see there's actually it cut about halfway through. Interesting about this one is on older tools, they do this where they just use little brass, uh, little pieces of brass that they stake in there for balancing, but they use brass on one side and actually do drilling to lighten up on this side of the motor. So they're actually using a combination. Then, of course, a steel fan, very steep uh, blades on there. This thing really 
excuse me, this play, uh, excuse me, this drill really does move a lot of air. Interestingly, this is a rubber sealed bearing. This, I don't know if this pier bearing is a stock bearing. It almost seems like this has been replaced at some point because this actually has a just a fair, it has, it feels perfect and has a fair amount of stiction. So there'd be no reason. All you do is you realize you're going to get a little ding in the seal, but you just get in there with like a push pin or something and you just pry it and pop out the little rubber seal and then that's how you can re-grease these. Anyway, I'm going to toss a little grease in the gearbox and let's do a little drilling with this. Alright, I'm going to do a quick little drilling operation in my standard uh, drill block here. And we'll just see how this gives it a run. Make sure that your work and your persons are braced with these drills. The one big issue without having a reverse is these situations where you may not want to go all the way through. You don't have a reverse in this situation. I just have to run it and try to uh, muscle it out. So that was it for this video. Just wanted to show inside, get just a quick look at how big some of the gears are in these three quarter inch drills. They just shame all these other drills. Uh, it's crazy. The idler gears in this are thicker than the whole gear stack in a, a half inch drill that you get from a big box store. And that's why I've always been fascinated with these is just because of their big size and uh, the fact that they represent a lot of work that people just uh, that still gets done. People just use other methods when many times a three quarter inch drill is exactly what the doctor ordered. <laughs> I've got the hiccups anyway. And I think this one's pretty definitely pretty cool. And uh, we can see here many of these drills also have what's known as key drive chucks. So there'll be a space and there'll be like a machine slot in the back of the chuck where the chuck slides onto a taper. Um, since this isn't reversing, they just use a normal threaded chuck. It doesn't even have a hole to use a chuck screw because it was never designed to even be operated in reverse. And it's probably one of the biggest issues with many of these older old drills in general, and especially these three quarter inch ones, is the ones that don't have a reverse. Uh, definitely are cumbersome. A lot of times you get something jammed, you need to back it out. And with these non-reversible ones, uh, makes out a real bear. But even so, uh, this is a cool old drill and it'll be great just for when you want to do stuff where it's going to get ugly and may actually fall or something like that. And actually my Black & Decker and even my Milwaukee's are my nicer ones because at least they do reversing and are a little bit more modern. So it's nice to have one of these. This would be a loner. If somebody says I'm trying to dig some fence post holes or uh, and other jobs too, which you can get away with using half inch drills, but it's really the purview of a three quarter inch drill, like the large four and five eighths self feed bits that plumbers would use for uh, toilet drains. That's how big it's a big hole about this big around large hole saws for recessed lighting and that type of stuff. Uh, you wouldn't want to use this overhead, but that would be a great example where you want a low speed and plenty of torque because as you increase the diameter of the bit, it dramatically uh, increases the amount of torque you need. As far and actually how circles work, if you double the diameter, you need triple the power to drive it. Because of course the area around the circle is, is multiplied by pi, not by two. And it's surprising you people are really are overloading half inch drills, driving those four and five eight cell feed bits, the big six inch hole saws. Uh, those really are the purview of big drills like this to have big, thick gears that can take a lot of heat and a lot of continuous heavy loads. And that's why I like these are so much as they are super heavy duty. The other thing that's always cool about these old drills is, of course, the chuck keys. This isn't as large. The largest Jacobs chucks I've seen was in a machine shop where it was a one inch Jacobs chuck. Huge Jacobs chuck with an absolutely beast of a key. But these K4s here for these three quarter inch drive chucks are still a pretty healthy Jacobs key. Uh, most people won't hold a chuck key that's, you know, big enough to fill their hand. Anyway, this is a cool old skill. And uh, just to add to my tool reviews and just for the internet in general there's very little information about three quarter inch drills in general because they aren't very common to begin with because they're of course super expensive regardless of what era they were uh, sold in 
And they were really for a lot of industrial uses. Many times three quarter inch drills weren't used freehand. They were sold as part of heavy duty drill presses or as uh, motor heads for magnetic drill presses, that type of stuff. So it's always kind of cool to see these old uh, hand operated ones. And it being a skill and actually knowing that the gears and motor are generally okay. Uh, but the way the handle is designed, the wiring is actually much worse than their Black & Decker, Rockwell, uh, Milwaukee, Thor, Sioux, variety of manufacturers over the decades have made big drills like this. And the skill, mechanically it works okay, but there's some you know intrinsic issues with it that make it not my favorite. And so that's why I'm kind of glad to have this. This is one that I'll use for... Uh, ugly situations if it falls and breaks or somehow you manage to burn it up or something it's not the one i'm going to be heartbroken over anyway i really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do until next time caddis maximus out